Okay, hi there, and welcome to a macro video looking at uh, currency systems. One of the most important decisions that any country can make is what type of currency or foreign exchange rate system to use. And in this short video, we'll look at each of the main currency systems and provide an update on the choices that different nations have made. Now, your exam board specification will make clear which currency systems you have to cover. But here's an overall summary. Free floating, managed floating, uh, then semi-fixed currency, sometimes known as a crawling peg, a fully fixed exchange rate, otherwise known as a hard peg, and also a currency board system. Only a few countries use this, which is a, a very hard currency peg. What I've done here in this slide, which you may well want to take a, a, a screenshot of perhaps, is to just think about the key features of each currency system. So with a free floating currency, the exchange rate finds its own level. There's no target set by a central bank. There's no government central bank intervention designed to manipulate the exchange rate. Countries don't have to hold big reserves of foreign currency to use when buying and selling currencies. The exchange rate essentially finds its own level. With a managed floating system, there could be an implicit or explicit target for the exchange rate. It depends on how important a country thinks the exchange rate is in meeting their macro objectives. Occasional intervention in the markets by central banks, and there'll be a separate video on how they intervene in the currency markets. And if they're going to intervene, thus they will need some foreign exchange reserves uh, as part of their instruments, their tools for intervention. With a semi-fixed currency crawling peg system, uh, there is a target for the exchange rate. It may be a a clear target, with a, but with a, a degree of flexibility allow, allowed either side, so the currency can move within bands. Central bank will intervene if needed, not if the currency is keeping within its agreed bands. And obviously, if you're going to intervene, you need foreign exchange reserves as part of your armory. With a fully fixed hard peg currency system, there is a very explicit currency target the central bank has to intervene to maintain the official currency peg uh, if the markets are not trading at that price. Intervention is essential. And again, you're going to need foreign exchange reserves. There are different degrees of floating. Floating exchange rate is basically where the exchange rate is market determined. And according to the IMF, it's when there's no uh, ascertainable or predictable path for the exchange rate. Um, and that allows you to talk about managed floating as part of a floating system. To be a free floating currency, uh, to be classified as a pure free float, intervention in the markets occurs only exceptionally and aims to address disorderly market conditions, some sort of economic or financial crisis. So there is a little bit of a blurred distinction between what is a free float and what is a managed floating system. With a fixed exchange rate system, you are anchoring your currency either in a fully fixed way or a semi-fixed way. So the central bank, otherwise known as the monetary authority, they buy and sell currencies to maintain their exchange rate at the predetermined fixed level or within the range. The currency peg can be increased. That's called the revaluation of the exchange rate. Or it can be reduced. and That's called the devaluation of a fixed exchange rate. Currency board arrangement only applies to just a few countries. It's actually a hard peg. The currency board is when the management of the exchange rate and the money supply is taken away from the central bank. You have an independent monetary authority um, decides to peg an exchange rate to a foreign currency and they always hold back an equal amount of the foreign currency in their reserves. Uh, the best example is Hong Kong which for many years, I think over three decades, has had a currency board arrangement with the US dollar. Just very fin finally here, I'm just going to give you some examples of where we are in terms of countries and their exchange rate system. So in some countries, um, there is no separate legal tender. So the currency of another country circulates as a sole legal tender. So in Ecuador, it's the US dollar. In Kosovo, it's the euro. Hong Kong has a currency board with the US dollar. Bulgaria has a currency board system with the euro. It's outside the single currency, but has a fixed exchange rate with the euro. Um, Saudi Arabia has a fixed exchange rate with the US dollar. Denmark 
a fixed exchange rate with the euro. The Paul, Kuwait, they have fixed exchange rates, but against a basket of currencies. Um, then we get to semi-fixed exchange rates. Jamaica has a semi-fixed exchange rate, uh, partially pegged to the US dollar. Croatia, similarly, partially pegged to the euro. China is moving towards a floating exchange rate, moving gradually, um, but it has a, a semi-fixed system um, based around a composite of currencies, not just one currency. And then you get more countries who, who typically manage their floating system. Mexico's in there, South Korea, South Africa, India and Japan. And according to the IMF's latest classification, this is taken directly from their latest report, Australia, Canada, Norway, UK, USA and the Eurozone, they are, are still categorised as free floating exchange rates. That's where we are at the moment. Uh, if you were fancy testing your knowledge on currencies and currency systems, I've put a few clear the deck activities on the tutor to your website, which gives you a 60 second challenge to match countries with exchange rates and systems. I'll post a link to clear the deck in the comment section of this video. Okay, thanks for this uh, thanks for joining in this uh, this quick look at currency systems.